Coming up on Lexington now, the Main Street Clean Sweep, spring cleaning your own home, and severe weather preparedness. This and more up next on this week's edition of Lexington Now. Roberts and welcome to another edition of Lexington Now where we take a look at the news that shapes your urban county government. The Downtown Lexington Foundation is sponsoring what they call the Main Street Clean Sweep. It's coming up soon and they want you to get involved. Here's more information. Oh trash. Nobody likes trash. Hey I'm Randy with GTV3. I talked to Kyle Frizzle with the Downtown Lexington Corporation and Amy Soner with Bluegrass Green Source. We're going to tell you about the Main Street Clean Sweep, April 22nd, Earth Day. Pick up the trash. I'm Kyle with the Downtown Lexington Corporation. Um, this year we're partnering with Bluegrass Green Source for the, for the Main Street Clean Sweep. It's the third annual Main Street Clean Sweep, so we need everybody's help to come out and help pick up litter in uh, three different downtown locations. The three local areas for the Main Street Clean Sweep are on UK's campus, the Fifth Third Bank Pavilion, and Thoroughbred Park. So get out on Earth Day, Friday, April 22nd from 12 to 4 p.m. Um, we're asking volunteers in Lexington to get out and just help pick up litter or debris. So for more information, visit bggreensource.org or visit www.downtownlex.com and don't forget to visit us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tell us who you are and sure. what you do. So my name is Amy Soner. I'm the Executive Director of Bluegrass Green Source. All right, now tell us about this Clean Sweep Day. What's going on in Lexington and, and regionally, I think you can. Sure, so Bluegrass Green Source has done Main Street Clean Sweep for three years. This is the first time we're partnering with the Downtown Lexington Corporation Foundation, which is gonna be a great partnership. Downtown Lexington Corporation Foundation has done a trash bash in downtown for a few years before we started Main Street Clean Sweep. And so this is a great opportunity to bring it together and, and partner up and really make a big effort here in Lexington. At the same time, we're going to be working in 21 other communities in Central Kentucky, all on Earth Day, April 22nd from 1 to 4. So it's going to be a huge impact to the litter in our community. Now, why exactly, why, is, why are you all doing it? Why is litter banned? So, you know, everybody thinks that litter is unsightly. You see cigarette butts on the side of the road, you see people's McDonald's cups or cups, you know, thrown out of their car window, and everybody gets really mad about it. Litter is not just unsightly. Also, when it rains, that rainwater washes the litter into our storm drains and into our creeks. It does not get treated, so everything that's on the ground ends up in our water, and so that's terrible. We don't want that in our water and our drinking sources and things like that. We also sometimes feel that we don't have anything, we can't do anything about it. And so being able to, in, in mass, in a big group of people, clean up litter in one four hour period on Earth Day, it empowers us that we can make a difference, that small things do, really do make big changes here in, in Lexington and in Central Kentucky. What specific items are you looking for that people tend to throw out? Bottles, paper bags? Plastic bags, stuff like that. Sure. You know, the people who come out and clean up litter, they think that they've seen litter. They haven't until you're actually picking it up. You find everything, you know, this is going to be a Friday, so everything that Thursday night, everything that happened Thursday night, you will find. You will find uh, beer bottles and cigarette butts and, and uh, containers, things like that. You also find things you didn't even expect, like baby bottles. We found women's underwear before. I mean, it's been an amazingly diverse group of things. One year we had a contest to see who could pick up the most interesting pieces of trash. Um, so, you know, I'd be interested to see what people have to, what people find. For more information, people want to find out how to sign up. Sure. So people can uh, sign up uh, and find out more information at our website, which is bggreensource.org. You can also go to downtownlex.com and you can sign up at both places since this is the partnership here in Lexington. If you're outside of Lexington, bggreensource.org is the place to go for, for their pickup locations and, and where, to, where to meet there. Everything is going to be from 12 to 4 on Earth Day, which is Friday, April 22nd. For more information about how to get involved, you can visit the organizer's website. It's www.downtownlex. Com. Spring is just around the corner and that means so is spring cleaning. We've got some tips for you though. The Division of Waste Management's Lauren Monahan has some information. 
Yes, there are lots of tips um, that we can discuss that can help with those spring cleaning projects, um, home improvement projects, um, painting projects, anything under the sun that um, a lot of residents are doing um, during this time of year as the weather continues to get warmer. Um, paint is something that we see frequently. Um, if you no longer need paint, we have a few suggestions. We have um, a recycling program that was started back in 2009 with Habitat for Humanity um, over at their ReStore on Southland Drive. They actually accept latex paint um, in their recycling program. They take that paint, they mix it with um, different colors. Um, they've actually perfected a few different really neat colors um, with the recycled paint that they receive and so you can actually purchase that paint as well. So you can not only recycle your paint, but you can purchase recycled paint over there at the ReStore. That's for paint that isn't old, dried up. Um, and so if you have paint that you are ready to get rid of, uh, we just ask that you um, take the lid off that paint can, you mix it with paint hardener, uh, kitty litter, sawdust, any of those items will help harden your paint. Stir it up, set the lid back on there, um, you can set it at the curb for our crews to take care of when they come by on your regular service day. You can also go ahead and put that bagged inside your Herbie container and um, that's also a safe way, of course, after it's been hardened. A lot of you, while you're cleaning out your garages or other parts of your homes uh, this spring season, may have hazardous chemicals to get rid of. We ask that you hold on to those chemicals until our next hazardous waste collection event which allows for residents to drop off any hazardous chemicals, um, old oil, um, oil-based paint, um, pesticides, fertilizers, uh, furniture, varnish or finish, um, items such as this uh, that um, you don't want to put in your herbie since they are hazardous. Uh, so that we ask that you hold on to those until our next hazardous take back event occurs. Um, you can also look on the label. Sometimes labels on these hazardous chemicals uh, contain information on safe disposal methods or they have a phone number that you can call for more information or even a website. Um, that's something if you'd like to just go ahead and maybe try to dispose of that in a safe way before our next hazardous uh, collection. Um, you can always look at the back label on some of those items. We've got um, a couple different um, ways that you can dispose of items that you uh, may not need any longer. Um, one such item is appliances. Um, we also refer to those as white goods. Um, that's anything from a stove um, to a refrigerator or freezer, um, washers and dryers. Uh, these items can be serviced by the city if you receive city trash collection. Um, all it requires is a call to LexCall at 311 or 425-2255 and we will send a special truck, different from the regular trucks that service your neighborhood every single week. And so that's why all you have to do is call LexCall. Um, they will send a truck out to uh, pick up that appliance. Um, residents of Lexington can also uh, take appliances to environmental recycling on Winchester Road. And you can visit our website for more information on um, that drop-off service. As residents get outside more um, in the spring and summer seasons and begin pruning your lawns and your gardens, the Division of Waste Management offers yard waste pickup. Um, we pick up items such as leaves, uh, grass clippings, uh, tree branches. Um, so we recommend if you don't have a Linny container, please call LexCall and request one. This is the best way to have your yard waste picked up from your location. We have yard waste routes that run through the neighborhood every single week on your regular collection day. Construction and demolition material is not serviced by the Division of Waste Management at the curb. If you have this material um, and you have a contractor doing that work for you, um, consult with them. They may have a way to dispose of that for you. Um, we also accept that material at our Fayette County Transfer Station located at 1505 Old Frankfort Pike. If you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to go to our website. Um, we have lots of information on there. Um, you can also call LexCall um, at 311. Our website is www.lexingtonky.gov slash waste management. For more information, you can log on to the city's website. It's lexingtonky.gov.
And coming up after the break, we'll give you more details on a controversial property tax assessment. We have an abundance of beauty and natural resources here in the bluegrass. More miles of running water than any state in the continental U.S. You may not know it, but all our creeks and streams catch water directly from storm sewers on our streets. That means when someone tosses a cigarette butt on Main or Vine, chances are good it'll end up in Town Branch. Leave some pet waste on a sidewalk near Versailles Road, it goes into Wolf Run Creek. So please, don't trash the bluegrass. Hi everybody, I'm Randy with GTV3. March is Severe Storms Preparedness Month for Fayette County. It's important that you don't wait. Make a plan. And here's why you don't want to wait. Don't wait. Communicate. For more information, be sure and visit BeReadyLexington.com. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Fire Administration. Have two ways out. When fire strikes, deadly smoke can fill your home within minutes. That's why the USFA wants you to plan and practice home fire drills. Draw a map of each level of your home showing all doors and windows. Discuss the map with everyone who lives with you. Practice your home fire drill at least twice a year. Make sure all doors and windows that lead outside open easily. Push the smoke alarm button to start the drill. Try feeling your way in the dark or with your eyes closed. Have at least two ways out of every room. If your first way out is blocked by fire or smoke, you can use your second way out. If there is smoke, get low and go. Crawl quickly under the smoke to your nearest exit. Close doors behind you and gather at a pre-planned outside meeting place where first responders can see you. Call 911. Remember, get out and stay out. Never go back inside for people, pets, or things. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. Welcome to Your Health, starring your hands. On today's show, washing your hands. If people don't wash their hands often, especially when they're sick, they can spread germs directly to other people or onto surfaces that others touch. And before you know it, everyone has come down with something. It's important to wash your hands frequently with good soapy water. Here's some hand washing tips. Wash your hands after using the bathroom. Wash your hands after coughing or blowing your nose. Wash your hands before eating, serving, or preparing food. Wash your hands after playing with your pets or touching other animals. Wash your hands after outdoor activities. Wash your hands before and after visiting someone who's sick. Wash your hands when they get dirty. And wash your hands after changing those diapers. Thanks for watching Your Health, and remember, wash those hands frequently. To the show. It's been somewhat of a controversial topic lately. I'm talking about how agricultural property taxes are assessed. 
Fayette County PVA David O'Neill offers some insight into this very hot topic. Hi, I'm David O'Neill, your property valuation administrator for Fayette County. There is a state law that allows for any owner of 10 or more contiguous acres to receive what's referred to as an agricultural classification for property tax purposes, and it provides a significant decrease in property tax liability. Uh, originally, it was intended for folks who operate an actual farm or engaged in agriculture, but loopholes have uh, appeared over the years which make it available to anybody who owns 10 or more acres regardless of what they're using the land for. And obviously that's not the original intent of the law, so we are working with the legislature and the Department of Revenue to help identify and close up those loopholes so that the law only applies to folks engaged actively in agricultural pursuits or in farming. Uh, for more information, you can visit our website, FayettePVA.com, where you will find links to more information. Thank you. For more information, you can visit the Fayette County PVA website. It's FayettePVA.com. March is the time of the year when snowflakes turn to rain and snowstorms turn into thunderstorms and other severe weather. And this is also the time to get prepared, which is why March is Severe Weather Preparedness Month. Here's more on what you can do to get your house and your family prepared for what could be the worst. Severe weather can strike at any time, but especially this time of the year. One of the things that uh, we focus on a lot this time of year, obviously, are uh, dest destructive spring storms. Historically, our worst storms generally happen from about late January to about late May when we get uh, the, uh, the warm fronts come through and spawn off very often tornadoes. Tim Brandewee with the Division of Emergency Management says it's only a matter of time until storms do hit, so he says the best offense is a good defense. The best defense you have against destructive weather, especially this time of year, uh, is awareness. And with the advent of 24-hour weather stations, but more importantly, uh, personal electronic devices, the ability to keep track of weather as it moves and as it threatens uh, has greatly increased. And he adds that having a weather radio is an absolute must. The, uh, the single biggest thing that we really recommend that every household uh, have is a NOAA weather radio. Uh, these weather radios will be automatically activated by the National Weather Service uh, in the event of approaching dangerous weather. Uh, these new systems are great. Uh, I know that if people have had some of the older ones, they used to go off all the time for you know every storm from Paducah to Pikeville. But with the technologies of the new ones, you can narrow it down right to your county. Brandewee says it's especially important during the springtime because storms can come right during the middle of the night. The siren systems we have in the city are only designed to warn people that are outside. And so if you're inside your house uh, and it's late at night or you're in bed, the single best way to be alerted of the approach of very dangerous weather would be to uh, procure a NOAA weather radio. They're, they're available at Walmarts, Kroger's, Radio Shacks. You know, we don't, we recommend that every family maintain one. The best defense you have against destructive weather, especially this time of year, uh, is awareness. Brandewee says it's better to be safe than sorry. Try to maintain a kit at your house, you know, to be somewhat self-sufficient for a day or two. Uh, our website, um, the Fayette County Emergency Management website. Uh, we have some readiness tips about uh, what to keep in a kit, a radio, a flashlight, uh, some water, perhaps prepare for extended power outages, um, and have a plan. If you choose not to make a kit at home, you should at least read up on some of the steps you can take to be safe inside of your home. Uh, you should always get to the lowest uh, point in your house, uh, the furthest away from any opening to the outside, doors, windows, whatever. Of course, if you have a basement, uh, basement's obviously the best place to go. Again, you just kind of want to get away from the outside uh, in case uh, things start to blow around and uh, to try, try to avoid injury that way. But uh, otherwise, our primary thing that we try to tell the citizens is be aware. For more information, you can visit BeReadyLexington.com. The City of Lexington has unveiled its newly designed website and they want you to take a look at it and give your feedback so we can make sure the website is the best it can be. Eric Schwartz, who's heading up the project, has more. My name is Eric Schwartz. I work in the IT department 
Uh, I work in a, the applications group and um, let's see, I, I started up about a year ago after a, I was part of the, actually the Code for America fellowship that happened in 2014. So I was here in Lexington working with the mayor's office and various uh, areas around the city during that year. And then after that year was over, 2014, I actually came on board as a contractor, and so I've been here in Applications Group, uh, working primarily on upgrading our city website. The goal of the website really is to make it easy for people in Lexington to interact with the city online. And so uh, that means uh, making it easier to find the information that you need and sort of get on with your day, because we've talked with many people in, in the city and uh, that's, that's what they usually want, is they want to be able to find information quickly, um, find the forms they may need, uh, find the event that they're looking for, and um, make sure that they know where it is, how to get there, uh, and, and sort of move on. Um, so that's the, that's the approach that we're taking, trying to make it very much focused around what people need from the city. So we do, we have a new, we have a, an address we're using during um, the pilot phase, as we call it. And uh, we invite everyone to visit the site at next.lexingtonky.gov and uh, please give us feedback. We really uh, appreciate the effort. It helps us to make the site uh, uh, much better and improve over time. And it will be up and running for uh, three or four months as we um, collect feedback from people in Lexington and from city employees. Uh, and it gives us an opportunity to test out new things during that period. So then we transition um, the, to the lexingtonky.gov uh, um, URL uh, after that time. And so during this pilot phase, the current site still is up and running at the usual place. And then uh, we, uh, we have both sites running at, at the same time. And then eventually we transition to uh, the new site fully. There are a lot of things that we're excited about. And one of the big ones is just everybody uh, uses their phones now. So you have almost 50% of our traffic comes from people on their mobile phones or on tablets. And so we uh, bake into the design uh, uh, mobile friendliness. So it's easy, when you look on your phone, you get more or less the same experience uh, that you have when you're on your full desktop. That's a big feature. Um, and then we also have We'll have, make it easier for people to find events, as I mentioned earlier, um, make it easier to find exactly the uh, department you may need, but also if you're not familiar with which department um, offers a service you're looking for, we want, that, we want you to be able to find it based on the topic. So if you're uh, a senior and you're looking for uh, services related to being a senior, you'll be able to kind of find those all in one place. Um, even if they're offered from different departments, they're kind of, they'll be together in one area. And so we invite everyone to visit the pilot site at next.lexingtonky.gov and to give us feedback um, on any page that really helps us to uh, make the site uh, as good as it can be. Thank you. As always, we've got a busy week ahead here in the Urban County Government. Here's a quick look at what's on the schedule, but for a complete listing of meetings and events, you can visit the city's website. It's LexingtonKY.gov.
That's all for this week's edition of Lexington Now. We'll return next week with more news from your urban county government. But in the meantime, you can keep up with what we're doing by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also get 24-7 traffic updates by following us on Twitter. Our handle is at LexRex. For the staff and producers at GTV3, I'm Sherelle Roberts, and that's it for now.